Everybody Wang Chung tonight. <laughs> 13 going on 30. Happy Halloween, guys. This video is obviously satire. I'm just trying to prove a point. I'm half white. I'm trying to show my heritage some love. So I got this video idea after watching the movie Am I Racist? created by Matt Walsh. In the documentary, there's this part where he interviews this young lady. I'm not going to say her name. I don't want her to get any more hate. I don't want her to get bullied anymore. But she was she's a young university student that used to go to ASU here in Arizona. I'm wondering, where do I go from here as an individual on this anti-racist journey? You should know whose land you're on. Our existence as Americans is predicated on other people's suffering. Learn about who is suffering because of our existence on, on this stolen land. It is important to feel bad um, about what your ancestors did. Embrace the pain. Yes. Well, she blew up online a few years back for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Police lives matter? You have the same <laughs> sticker. We're just trying to do school. What? You guys have the same sticker as the other. But this is our space. We've got a Police Lives Matter sticker and we're getting kicked out. Can't do school. Nobody's you, you just said we have to leave. No, I said you're making this space you uncomfortable. uncomfortable. But you're white. Do you understand what a multicultural space? It means you're not being centered. White's not a culture? No. No, it's not a culture. It's white is not a culture. Say it again to the camera. You think whiteness is a culture? This is insane. So anyway, this is the violence that ASU does, and this is the type of people that they protect, okay? This white man thinks he can take up our space, and this is why we need a multicultural space, because they think they can get away with this shit. I'm going to sit here the whole time, and you can find somebody to kiss that, you. That's cool. We, we, we will. She claims to be a doctor. She has, allegedly, she has her PhD in how to be racist. She's public on her Instagram page, but like, it, it's weird because she only has 700 followers and she's public because she's trying to capitalize on this, this grifter victim thing she's doing. Her comments are turned off ever since the movie came out. So you can't make any comments. So don't go there. Don't think to bully her or anything. She's still young, she has time to grow. She also has a YouTube channel. I checked the other day and she had one subscriber. She couldn't ask her parents to subscribe, but I checked like yesterday and she has two. I found an interview she was on on YouTube after she released that video and got all the backlash for being a racist and her playing victim in this video. Oh my, she's even like shaking and making it seem like she's a victim, but she's supposed to be a doctor. It's like doctors don't cry. It was a big culture shock moving uh, to a place like Arizona. Um, it's, uh, it's just a very um, racist uh, and not a friendly place for people of color. Um, and so that was the environment that I, um, you know, started t uh, my PhD in. Um, so she explains in the interview that when she came to Arizona to go to the university, she has a culture shock because Arizona is so racist. I've lived in a few different states. I've lived in Indiana, Texas, Arizona, and California. I was born in California, but I lived most of my life in Arizona, and Arizona is not racist. Arizona's culture is very easy. If you're cool, you can kick it, which means she came here and she didn't, she could, she's not cool. She can't kick it. It's not not like California where everyone thinks they're too good for everyone and entitled and don't talk to anyone. It's not like that here. If you're chill, if you can have a conversation, if you could joke around, if you don't get offended, if you're not a whiny little pussy bitch, if you're not a woke bitch, you're fine in Arizona. If you're a woke little crybaby victim, you're not going to last here. You're not. So she came to Arizona, realized she wasn't popular, and then became a whiny little victim, started her own club at the university called the Multicultural Club, which means no whites allowed. In this club, she was asking the university to have a study hall for multicultures and no whites. And they said, all of our areas are multicultural. Everyone's allowed. It's it's America, like we're not, we're not racist here. She said that once the Black Lives Matter movement happened, the university had to give her her own hall. So she was waiting until any white person came in there and said, that's segregation, like you're literally racist. <laughs>
She claims that white people, they don't invent anything. They just take and steal from other cultures and white people have no culture. Bitch, you probably drink Starbucks. You look like you drink Starbucks. That that was created by some white guy in Seattle. So like, I'm, I'm trying to show that there's white culture with Halloween costumes. Even if you wanted to be like a, a Starbucks barista for Halloween. White culture, even if you wanted to be the cup. Starbucks cup, still white culture. Nobody cares what a rich university kid thinks. This is what they teach these kids at the university and that's why they think this way. This isn't a race war, this is a class war. A lot of us didn't get a chance or an option to go to a university. Anywho, every day white pop culture inspires us for Halloween costumes. So this video is going to be more about, hey, there is white culture, happy Halloween kind of thing. And the first category is going to be movies and TV shows. I am 13 going on 30. So what are some movies and TV shows people always redo during the Halloween season? They do Mean Girls all the time. They love doing Baywatch. Tiger King, Carol Baskin, when that was so popular. I'm sure Beetlejuice is gonna be huge this year. Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, and then all the superheroes. But I have a whole category for the superheroes. The next category is white superheroes. <laughs> I feel so weird saying white. But I'm Spider-Gwen. It made more sense when I had the blonde hair, but I love Spider-Man, so Spider-Gwen was the second best thing I can be. So what are some superheroes you can think of? that we can add to the list. So everyone, you know, bitches love to be Harley Quinn and that new stupid Joker movie came out. So we have Harley Quinn, we have the Joker. Is anyone gonna see that? I heard that movie's not doing so good in the box office, but why would it? You either wanna watch the Joker, like I love the Joker. I love, like obviously I love superheroes. So yeah, you either like Joker and superhero movies or you like Lady Gaga in musicals. And I'm not a fan of Lady Gaga. So obviously we have Batman, we have Spider-Man, Spider-Man, my favorite. We have Captain America. We have Deadpool, Wolverine, Catwoman, Captain America. The list goes on and on because most creators that created superhero are white Caucasian men. Oh no. Like Stan Lee, we love Stan Lee. Poor Stan Lee, he kind of reminds me of Joe Biden, except Joe Biden is a mean man and Stan Lee was an awesome man. But it kind of reminds me how they got extremely old and whoever was taking care of them or their carriers or whoever takes care of them, we're still making them, you know, like go to all the Comic Cons and sign autographs, which he loves his fans, so I'm sure he, but he didn't know where he was. Kind of like Joe Biden when he, like, I guess he still is president. Like he doesn't know where he is. He didn't even know there was a storm going on in part of the world. Okay guys, which category is this? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> I don't look anything like her. This week has seen better days. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be Sabrina Carpenter, okay? We're both the same size, we're petite. And if my makeup looks like shit, it's cause her makeup looks like shit. I don't like how she does the brown with the pink and then her bangs are too, we wanna see your adorable face, Sabrina. So this category of white culture is gonna be pop stars and singers. So we have Charlie XCX, of course, Chapel Roan, Elvis, Justin Bieber. Dolly Parton would have been a good one. Well. There's nothing here. And how about for the dudes? We got Harry Styles, Post Malone, Jelly Roll. Guys, I wanted to bring Jacob in for this one. I think he's the cutest baby, but he kind of low key looks like Java the Hutt sometimes. Baby, look at the camera. He's mad. Jacob. So I lost my ponytail for this costume, so I found some yarn instead. But I just realized that a lot of my costumes do not fit anymore. I lost a lot of weight. In the last year, I went on my fitness journey. So these boobs, yeah, there's nothing in here. I lost my boobs a year ago. <laughs> 
I forgot to tell you what category this is. This is going to be fairy tale category. I was thinking like princesses, fairy tales, like Disney. But I don't have any princess costumes except for Princess Leia, which is Disney. I'm a Disney princess. So I want you to think about all the fairy tales that you grew up with. Like they're most likely we grew up with like more Western culture, like European American fairy tales, which would be like the Brothers Grimm. Now, the I Brothers Grimm. They're probably also white Caucasian men, but they created different um, fairy tales that we remember, like Little Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty. Um, what's the other one with an R? Rumpelstiltskin. And then, of course, Disney came along and they remade a lot of these fairy tales that these people made through the years, these white people made through the years, like Snow White and The Little Mermaid and Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland was created by Lewis... Uh, Lewis Carroll, what's his name? I always forget names of people I hate. I love Alice in Wonderland, but then, you know, I kind of found out that Lewis Carroll's kind of a, he possibly, allegedly could have been a PDF file, and that's what the book, book's about. <laughs> this is where I got the idea for this video. I recently watched a few weeks ago, Am I Racist? The movie created by Matt Walsh. And in the movie, he was talking about his daughter and how his daughter loves Moana. But like if she wants to be Moana for Halloween, what should he do? Should he, you know, buy the costume for her? Or, you know, because we don't want to culture appropriate. My daughter's four years old. I am an anti-racist educator, quote unquote. She's still watching Disney movies and she is choosing a white princess over princesses of color. Have you talked to her about that? All the time. My three-year-old daughter is very, her favorite princess is Moana. Love it. It's a good sign. Yeah. But then I also thought, you know, there's a, a little bit of cultural appropriation here. She wants to be Moana for Halloween. Mm-hmm. So how do we navigate that? Do I go and, and, and buy the Pacific Islander native uh, attire for my white three-year-old? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But I guess the, what we might call the Moana problem here is, <laughs> is what, uh, on one hand, there's cultural appropriation. On the other hand, there's gravitating towards uh, white characters. Right. So it's almost like no matter which way you go, you right. end up back in racism. We think every space belongs to us because we live in a white supremacist society. Is America an inherently racist country? I think the word inherent is challenging there. If we say... Fundamentally. Fundamentally, yes. America is racist to its bones. All of the... So inherently. Yeah. Isn't Moana like a real goddess in like that region? Like unless you go out and buy a Polynesian costume like a real one with like the head lay i forget what they're called but with the leaves and stuff like a native to that area then like what's the problem like if you run to the store and buy the disney version with the little orange like tube top that's still like that's the white culture disney's so white i'm gonna wear this ponytail for every video now i can't stop playing with it anyway i want to talk about something else i'm changing the subject <laughs> Do you guys remember that controversial show back in the 90s, um, Toddlers in Tiaras? I know, it's kind of cheesy, it kind of was a bad show, but there was one episode I loved so dearly. First of all, if you've never seen the show before, let me explain it. It's a reality show, I think it was on TLC, and they followed a bunch of families that had their daughters in... Um, in pageants, you know, the crazy pageants moms, and it would, that's where Honey Boo Boo came from. And it would show them get spray tanned and go to the pageants and how crazy it all was. Yeah, the show was a little taboo. But there was this one episode where there was this little girl who was so adorable, and she had, she loved Beyonce, and she loved black women, and she thought they were so beautiful. All her Barbies had to be black. And since they spray tanned these little girls, she wanted the darkest color, and she wanted to be sprayed several, several times. Everyone says Ali's kind of like a, a little modern day Shirley Temple, but she would much rather look more like uh, Beyonce. Beyonce. She's just always really liked dark skin and, and thought that it was beautiful. When Allison picks out her own toys, she won't pick out a peach doll. She will only pick out brown dolls. She's prayed before that Jesus would make her brown. Is that too tight? Yeah. I like tanning so I can get brown like Beyonce. I want to 
to be just brown. You want to be that brown? Well, let's see if we can do that for you. Can we hold that up here while we go spray tan? And when it came to the talent portion of the pageant, she would always sing and dance to Beyonce because she wouldn't stop about how much she loved Beyonce. And each time there was a little black girl in the pageant, she would run up to them and tell them how beautiful they were. It's just so cute because kids, kids don't know racism. They're taught racism. So if you tell them they can't wear a certain Halloween costume, you're teaching them racism. When I was young, I lived in a Cherokee... <laughs> Oh my God, this sounds horrible. I lived in a feather chief hat and I always had maracas with me. Everywhere I went, I had my maracas and like the chief feather hat, I was so small, but it would go to the floor. And I was, I was on cloud nine. I still want my feather hat. Trick or treat. <laughs> As you can tell, I didn't store my wigs properly. They were in boxes and in bags. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't prepare that well. But our, our next category is going to be history. And I know this isn't history. This is Lilu from the fifth element. Like She's from the future. It's sci-fi. It's fiction. But I have anxiety, so I think in the future. Anywho's okay, so what are some people in history that have some white culture? Everyone loves to be Marie Antoinette. Bonnie and Clyde, Joan of Arc, um, Edgar Allan Poe. People love doing that one for Halloween. The hot to a girl, <laughs> Trump. Hey, how about Ray Gun? Ray Gun one is iffy because she's Australian. So native, some native um, Australians can be super dark skin, but some can also be white. So that, you know, a lot of people are going to be Ray Gun this year. I'm just laughing because like I'm pictured, like I'm floating above my head looking at me because this is my last costume I'm doing. So like just today and how how funny this was and watching me change and it's just funny in my head there's more halloween videos to come at least one more i i have three ideas i think one's a little too taboo it's like it's like a joke that it's like is it too soon is it is it too early to make this joke but definitely one more coming up if you guys like this one please give it a big thumbs up if you want to subscribe be a part of the family please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Boop, boop.